In Lesson 3.1, students continue investigating the properties of substances and materials by looking at a Skittle and an M&M. Students are introduced to the idea that the extent to which something dissolves in water is a property of that substance. So the question is, how could we compare the dissolving of a Skittle and an M&M? You would guide students to come up with a design for an experiment to compare the dissolving of a Skittle to an M&M. And students will see that since Skittles and M&Ms are made from some of the same substances, but some of their substances are different, they have certain similarities and differences in the way they dissolve. Let's take a look. A big part of this lesson is for you to help guide students in the design of the experiment. So the question is, how could we compare the dissolving of an M&M and a Skittle? So you want students to say that, well, you would put them both in water. The question is, should you put them in the same amount of water? Should the water be the same temperature? Should you use the same color Skittle and M&M? Should you swirl them in the same way? So through questioning, you would get students to help you design an experiment where you're going to put the same color M&M and Skittle in the same amount of water and swirl in the same way for the same length of time and see what the difference is between them. So you would have students put the M&M and Skittle in the water at the same time and begin to swirl. And of course, you want them to swirl similarly. You wouldn't want one to swirl vigorously and the other to do it gently. You can stop during the swirling and ask students for observations. The amount of color coming off the M&M and the Skittle may be a little different, but what students will definitely see is that the inside of the M&M and the Skittle are different. And we've obviously time-lapsed this a bit so that it doesn't take quite as long to do the swirling on this video as it does in real life. And what you want students to do is to continue swirling until they can see whether the chocolate of the M&M dissolves or whether the white material of the Skittle dissolves. What they'll see is more of the inside of the Skittle dissolves than the inside of the M&M. Then you can show students an animation to help them understand why that might be. So here we have students swirling a Skittle and an M&M and eventually they'll see that they end up with the brown part of the M&M, which they'll know is chocolate, and the inside of the Skittle, which they won't really know what that is. But let's look at that process. So water molecules are attracted to sugar molecules, and for the M&M, they pull the sugar off the M&M and cause the sugar coating to dissolve into the water, and they're left with a chocolate on the inside. Now for a Skittle, the process is very, very similar, where the water will interact with the sugar coating of the Skittle and remove the sugar, and eventually the inside of the Skittle will be revealed, and that is white. Now the next question is, what happens to the inside of each of these candies? So let's look at what happens to the chocolate while it's in the water. Now chocolate is made up of molecules of fat, basically. Of course, there's some sugar mixed in with the chocolate, but it's mostly fat, and the water molecules are not attracted to the fat, so they don't really pull it apart. Now, the Skittle inside is made up of sugar and a substance called pectin, and the water molecules do interact with that. They are attracted to both of those molecules. Here, we're only showing pulling the sugar apart, which makes the inside of the Skittle dissolve much more than the inside of the M&M. And after the Skittle and the M&M have been in the water for a while and have been swirled by students, they take what's left of the M&M out and what's left of the Skittle out and compare them to M&Ms and Skittles that haven't been in water in order to see which one dissolved the most. And it's pretty easy to see that really only the outside of the M&M dissolved it seems like very little of the chocolate dissolved, but if you compare the Skittle, it's pretty clear that more of the inside of the Skittle dissolved than the inside of the M&M. And after looking at the animation, students can better understand why that is. For NGSS Standard 2 PS11, plan and conduct an investigation to describe and classify different kinds of materials by their observable properties, well, Lesson 3.1 
supports that standard because students look at different materials. They look at an M&M &M and a Skittle. The different observable properties are that the outside of both candies dissolves similarly, but the inside dissolves differently. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students help you plan an investigation to compare the dissolving of an M&M and a Skittle and their data is the size difference between the M&M and the Skittle after dissolving and they see that they have different properties. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, students are able to see that the chocolate versus the sugar and pectin have different properties. The chocolate does not dissolve well in water, but the sugar and pectin does. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, that events have causes, that students can design and conduct simple tests. Students see the results of dissolving between an M&M and a Skittle, and when they see the animation and understand the causes, they realize that on the molecular level, the outside of an M&M and a Skittle are similar and dissolve similarly, but the insides are different, and therefore they dissolve differently. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.